This week, episode 312 of Stogie Geeks, Drew and I interview Dan Davison. Dan is the sales manager at Queensberry Cigar and Pipe. His unique experiences in the industry include managing Rhode Island's oldest tobacconist, the Humidor Smoke Shop, to being a Northeast sales representative for Christoph Cigars. He's now over at Queensberry Cigar and Pipe. We are going to talk about the 2020 Tobacco Business Awards, what's been hot this year since after the show, IPCPR, Cigar Con, whatever, the big show, right, in the industry, and some industry trends. And then later on in this show, we're going to talk uh, Sticks of the Week. Drew and I are going to tell you what we've been smoking. Episode 312 of Stogie Geek starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And a Venice Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Welcome to Story Geeks, episode 312. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. I am joined by my co-host, Drew, over who is remotely out in Texas. Drew, what's up, buddy? Hey, nothing much, Joe. How you been doing out there? I'm doing good. I got the swivel chair today, so I'm like, I'm like, real, I've been already swiveling in it. I'm enjoying it. You know what I mean? Nice. It's super cool. We got a new, nice. we've, we've changed the setup a little bit over here. Uh, I'm sitting higher, kind of digging it. But anyway, um... We also are joined by Dan Davison out in Queensbury, New York. He is the sales manager for Queensbury Tobacco and Pipe. Dan, how you doing? What's going on, Joe? Good to be back on Stogie Geek. I was going to say, you are no stranger to the Stogie Geek show. Uh, no, sir. You know, uh, thanks for uh, jumping in. Uh, Dan had hit me up with, with an interesting topic. I wanted to take some time out to talk about the Tobacco Business Awards uh, that are... Uh, and some of the candidates that are up for nomination here in 2020, and I was like, you know, that that that's that's super cool. You know what I mean? Um, I have not covered that on my experience here uh, on on Story Geeks at all. So again, since since 2017, um, I, I at least if I did, uh, if if someone emails me and says, oh yeah, episode two something you did, I apologize because I must have been really drunk for that episode. Uh, that was probably when I was co-hosting and, and, and sneaking through. Now that I'm hosting, I got to remember. But anyway, um, uh, Dan, say hello to uh, Drew, who had joined What's Story up? Geek since last time you've been on. Yeah, yeah nice. I got to talk to Drew a little bit before uh, we started the show. It was nice to uh, meet Drew and, uh, yeah, excited to get rocking and rolling, man. Yeah, so... Um, these these tobacco business awards. Uh, yep. Full disclosure uh, on the um, tobacconist of the of the year. The nominations are uh, Queensberry is one of the nominees. Uh, you also are joined by uh, a, a, a really tall order of some some significant shops. What I what what I like to see. Yeah. What I think is super cool. Like I mean. Super, super cool. Out of the one, two, three, four, five, six uh, nominees, five of them are on the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no, I mean. it's 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 really cool. So, for people who aren't familiar, so Tobacco Business is uh, uh, industry magazine. Uh, pretty much, it's made for tobacconists, but anyone can really pick it up. It's a, I'm not sure if it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a free publication actually, but basically. Um, 
They do, this is the third year they've done it. They do the Tobacco Business Awards. They do it at, uh, last year it was at TPE, which is a Tobacco Plus Expo. It's a, another new trade show uh, for cigars, uh, pretty much everything, the vape, CBD, um, that's in Las Vegas. But uh, so the Tobacco Business Awards, they have a ton of different categories, kind of like uh, the Cigar Journal Awards. They do at Inter Tobacco in Germany every year. So there's a ton of different categories um, from Dominican Cigar of the Year, Honduran, Nicaraguan, Boutique, even mass market product, accessory, um, you know, Entrepreneur of the Year. And then we were fortunate enough to be nominated uh, for Tobacconist of the Year. And yeah, it's a, it's a huge uh, list of uh, great shops. I mean, you have uh, Twins in Londonderry in New Hampshire. Um, Lord Puffer, which is out in California, actually got to meet the, uh, the woman who owns that on a factory tour about a year ago. Um, Ansteads is on there. They're a big shop in the Carolinas. Boss Cigar, which is in Georgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's one more. Oh, and Short sure, Thing. Which sure Thing, yep. Which actually, uh, Luke Bryan is a part owner in that store. Um, so, mm. And they leave one appointed merchant of the year from Davidoff. So there's a lot of serious players uh on that list like you said and we're fortunate enough to uh also be considered in that category and uh it's cool it's it's a voting process so it's uh based on the votes they get from consumers retailers uh manufacturers and uh, we got to the final round and the final rounds from now until uh december 31st yeah yeah uh actually yeah it, it, it's 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 uh the voting is open and i'm gonna tell the listeners where to go not only to consider a vote but they have other categories as well uh it's right. actually super cool because when you get done voting they actually ask you you know are you a consumer are you a manufacturer are you a, re- a retailer and whatnot yeah. so it's actually the final question uh it's a quick two minute it's not even two minutes it's one it's 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 a minute in in it, it's a quick minute so uh survey to to cast your vote and also uh from uh, have you been to that uh, TPE? You you have last year, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so so last year. explain explain the kind of differences between that and IBCPR. Because correct me if I'm wrong, like IBCPR or whatever it's going to be called, right? Is is uh you know is um cigars and it's cigars and the tobacco business award the the, the TPE is really like the t- tobacco business so there could be some accessories there uh or vape products correct yeah yep yeah it's it's <clears throat> so i was fortunate enough to be able to go to like all the, the big 3 tobacco shows in the last year so we went to inter tobacco last last fall in yep. germany we went to TPE in january and we went to IPCPR, which is now PCA in July. But basically, um, for people who don't know, but, you know, it's the trade show. Obviously, there's a lot of manufacturers there. And, um, you know, it's cool to see everybody and there's a lot of new products. But for for my perspective as a, uh, on the retail side, that's where I do the majority of our purchasing for the store um, for the year. So um, a lot of times we spend most of those days working, um, trying to figure out budgeting, how much do we need to bring in for X, Y, and Z products, uh, look out for new stuff coming to the market, et cetera. But so to TPE is a newer trade show. It was actually voted um, one of the top new uh, trade shows in general across the board and whatever, whatever how they rate trade shows. Sure. But um, what's cool about TPE is it, unlike uh, IPCPR, PCA, it's everything. It's not just premium products. Um, so you have, um, before this year, a pretty small premium cigar presence at that show. The, I would say 60% of the show floor last year was vape mm-hmm. uh, and like CBD vape products, glass, um, stuff like that, um, and accessories like roll your own accessories, stuff like that. But now it's more focused because of some of the changes at PCA uh, on premium cigars. So you have a lot more manufacturers there, uh, pipe tobacco, pipe makers, uh, along with uh, some more. I would be curious to see actually how much vape is there this year because of all the change with vape in the U.S. Sure. Uh, But definitely, I would say at least double or triple the amount of uh, manufacturers on the premium cigar side are going this year, so it's pretty exciting, and we'll get a lot more work done because of that. Yeah, I, I was gonna, I was gonna go there with with the vape. I wonder this year. Uh, I'm I'm sure it, it it will be significantly reduced. 
uh, there uh, just because of what's been going on. But then also, I mean, you know, I also think that other than the IPCPR efforts in there, I think the industry itself from my meetings and, and the people that I talk to in the industry – they're looking for something other than the format of IPCPR as well. Whether they want to admit it here on Story Geeks yeah. or not, I I can tell you with with all assurance that significant players were like, eh, I'm not really too excited oh, about, about 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 the, there. So so I also think that their timing from a from a conference perspective and from a business perspective is is going to be well played to welcome in more of a presence of a of 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 premium cigars for sure. Yeah, a hundred percent, Joe. Um, the other thing about TPE I didn't get into is TPE is significantly smaller in terms of the scale uh, that PCA is, and that means that manufacturers spend a lot less on booth space. Like a lot of big players who would have, you know, I'm sure you've, you guys have been to the show and done videos there. Some of those booths are bigger than some retail stores. Mm, yeah, um, big beautiful booths. I mean, Perdomo's booth. I think, it, it, I mean, it had to have cost them millions of dollars to build because of all the LED boards and all the, it's beautiful. Um, but like someone like General Cigars last year, uh, who's a, you know, SCG is a giant company. They had a card table with a sign yep. because they don't need to put all that effort in so they can save money, right. uh, which, is, which is great for the manufacturing side. And it actually makes it easier to traverse the show because you have a much smaller floor to mm -hmm. uh, work. Yeah. So I think actually um, last year was in the North Hall at the Convention Center in Las Vegas. Now it's in the South Hall, which is I'm pretty sure the same place they do they've done IPCPR a couple of years. So yep. it looks like they got a bigger footprint this year. So I'll be curious to see how much bigger it is compared to the year before. Yeah, and and it works the same way within the security field. Some of the cons are we must attend, and some of the cons are like you know we we really don't like the direction it's going in, but however we must attend and. And yeah. and stuff like that, and and it works the same way, right? You got you got some, yeah. some 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 companies, especially well here in the premium cigar industry, can just walk the floor with a card table and do just as well as if you spent a uh, half a million dollars on a booth or even a hundred thousand dollars on a booth. And, and and a lot of that, a lot of that, from a business perspective, I really feel it has to deal with positioning. And then it also yeah. has to be about creating demand for your product, right? So, yeah. so other, you know, and plus, who left what company to roll what helps as yeah. well, you know? The other part about it, Joe, is TPE, you know, look, we're in a position where we can um, be able to do a lot of our buying in the, the off season, mm -hmm. um, which is a lot tough for some retailers because, you know, if you're doing it on a budget, you might not be able to buy what you would maybe buy at IPCPR mm -hmm. at, during the off time, but... It's great for us because we can buy the majority of our product before the season starts and have it as opposed to buy it in the middle of peak season. So um, there's a lot of serious buyers there. So they don't really need to roll out all the bells and whistles because the people who are there are serious people who want to buy. Like, buy not right, a lot of, right. you, don't, you don't need as much uh, glitz and glamour to get people in your booth to buy product. They, yeah, most people who walk in that show know what they're getting into. Yeah, you know, uh, you don't need a, a drum set or some chicken wings to sell cigars. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> or some chicken palm and stuff. You know what I mean? But anyway, yeah. Stoy Geeks, if you go to... If you go to tobaccobusiness.com forward slash awards 20, right, or tobaccobusiness.com, scroll all the way to till you see the awards, you can click on there. Uh, you, you can cast your votes for the business of, uh, awards. Voting began on November 1st. It goes through December 31st. Uh, Winners will be announced during uh, the uh, awards ceremony on January 30th, 2020. Uh, during Tobacco Plus Expo or TPE 2020 in Las Vegas. Um, if Story Geeks, if you're on Facebook, you've probably already seen some of the nominees already post the logo and all of that stuff. So you might be all over this already, but uh, there you go. Uh, before we get into the other nominees and other categories, Dan, take us through the process that a business or you know for example whoever is on a legacy war award or entrepreneur of the year how do you get into the category and or, or or more specifically how did you get into that category to become a nominee sure well um you know like i said we i kind of follow tobacco business um pretty they've, they're pretty good about commenting on 
uh, newsworthy stuff in the industry. So they send out like newsletters like two, three, four times a week. Um, and they, um, what's we call it? They sent out the thing like, hey, we're doing the Tobacco Business Awards. In the last few years, I think they've just done it in-house. Like, and uh, they kind of picked the, picked who the nominees were and voted in, internally about who was going to win what. And this year they opened it up to uh, a vote. So they just had like a blank. Um, if you go to the page now, obviously you're choosing who you're going to vote for. But before it was just like it had every category and then you just filled in what you thought should deserve to be nominated. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, you know, we reached out to our customers and um, said, hey, you know, uh, this is what's going on. Uh, there's awards. Uh being offered for our, our business. You know, if you enjoyed your time at Queensbury Cigar and Pipe and you think that we do a good job, we really appreciate your support and, you know, send us a vote. And uh, the top, I'm assuming it's, I don't know about the other categories, if they're all six, but for Tobacconist, it was six. So it must have been whoever got the top six votes got into the uh, finals. Yeah. And then um, the second half, again, is it's, it's based on what people vote for so it's uh you know it's it's pretty cool it's based on what people who are actually involved in the industry um do uh and it's also a little bit of grassroots campaigning which is always fun you know we like doing a lot of the social media stuff at the shop anyway so it's mm -hmm. just a natural fit for us to do something like that and, sure you know it's it's great so it's uh it's a great way to promote the store and uh you know, again, being good company with a lot of great retailers around the country. Sure. I, I, I Yeah. Uh, just to answer your question from reviewing the ballot, it, it is the top six. So each category has six uh, yeah. there. And we're going to go through the categories um, there for the listener as well. Um, we can get into that. Uh, but before that, Drew, do you have a question for Dan? Yeah. Um, yeah, no. I was just I was just gonna uh, say that I got a buddy who does uh, the American Music Awards. I guess they do they they kind of name process, and he gets his ballot. It was cool because he was sharing it with me uh, recently uh, about a couple months ago, and he was just telling me how you know showing me the ballot, and it's it's kind of the same form um, as is. But uh, it, for me, it's like uh, uh, just looking at the at, at the cigar shops that are there. So, so they they just send out this ballot, and this is how they comprise this. More say, yeah, I think so. I think like like I said, it was um, I, sometime in October. I don't know if it ran the whole month, maybe like three or four weeks in October, where they just uh -huh. said, "Hey, vote for your favorite uh, in each category for like entrepreneur, favorite cigar from each uh, country, and uh, let us know what you think." Mm -hmm. um, and then they must have comprised all the votes and whoever got the most, the top six in each category got to the next round. And then now you have the finals part of it. So, yeah. And, um, and, and, and we're going to go through the list. Yeah. Drew. We're going to go through the list now, Drew. Like, like if you look at it, Dan, like, well, we'll just go in order. Like Dominican cigar of the year, right? When, 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 when you take a look at this and it's like, Oh yeah, I could see where you know that the some because some like some of the sticks have come. I, I'm just comparing it to my experience, right? What so sure. Dominican cigar of the year? What are some of the sticks that I've been talking about over the past year in Story Geeks, right? Definitely, yeah. uh, I've mentioned the EP Carrillo Dusk several times, right? Uh, yep. Christoph Vengeance, I've mentioned them. Uh, yep. La Flora Dominicana, Double La Hero Digger. That's that's interesting yes. because if you're comparing that stick to other that's sticks, a huge cigar. It, that's a huge cigar, yeah. right? So wondering how some of the voting is going to go out on that. Uh, Davidoff Winston Churchill Late Hour. I mean, you know, I that's, can't yeah. I can't get through a Story Geek episode without saying Davidoff or Tatuai, right? So <laughs> so so there you go yeah. with that. Um, <laughs> Arturo Fluente. Uh, Hemingway Untold Story. Interesting how that crept up there, right? Cause that's, yeah, that's, you know that's, what I mean? It's like, you know. Yeah. There was a couple of cigar. I mean, we, we'll go through the list, obviously, but there's a couple of cigars on there where you're like, huh, that, that, I mean, hey, there's a lot of cigars that, uh, you know, people might say the same thing about us, you know, being on <laughs> so, All right. So, all right. Who knows? But, uh, you know, yeah, no, there's some, definitely in the cigars are some surprising choices, but Hey, that's, it's great to know what, uh, people are smoking, mm -hmm. especially Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 the, yeah. It, 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 the nominees for, for that seem 
seem to be to be in tune, and you can tell that uh, it, they're, they're the ones that are all over there. The, the only one uh, out of this that really sticks out for me, just cigar wise, is the LFD Double Hero Digger, right? Yeah. And then cigar wise, uh, again, uh, if you're listening at home, this is for the Dominican Cigar of the Year. Is the Alto Al Fluente Hemingway Untold Story? Like I was like, holy shit, yeah. I, I gotta go smoke one of those again. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, it's right. so so it's like, oh, like really, like like how many votes yeah. did they get, and how many people are still out there? Like if that's right. because if you look at a voting process, right? Obviously, like you said, get three or four weeks ago, it's all about top of mind awareness, right? So you build top of mind awareness. They go to the site, they vote, they go through their process. Like I don't think I've ever said. In the past two years, Arturo Fluente Hemingway untold story. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you no, you, you you would definitely think that it would be the short story, right? Or maybe like a sh double chateau, uh, eight five eight LC. sun grown, exactly, right? Like mm -hmm. or Opus X. Yep. Sure. Or, oh, oh, you know. There you go, right? Opus X. Totally then, forget. Yeah, right. Yeah, or like right. with LFT, like a chapter one or the Andalusian Bull, yep. like the stuff that people are always Andalusian. talking about. So yeah, it's it's kind of funny to see. Uh, Cigars that you didn't expect. You yep. know, that's great. Yep. Next category is Nicaraguan Cigar of the Year. Right? So you got the Drew Estate uh, Acid 20, uh, the Gurkha, Gurkha Trienta, right? Uh, My Father's Cigars, Don Pepper Garcia Original. I'm a fan of that for sure. Uh, Oliva Milanio, the Series V. Uh, Perdomo Habano. The bourbon, the bourbon, yeah, the bourbon aged Maduro, <laughs> uh, and Placencia, the El Mar del Fuego. You know, yeah. uh, Placencia El Mar del Just... Fuego, super popular in South Florida. Like Placencia is all over the place in South Florida. Every every shop, you know. Yeah, I thought that was a pretty strong list yeah. for Nicaraguan cigars because all those cigars are great sellers. They're they're. Call brand stuff. I mean, yeah. especially like the Don Pepin. That's an OG stick. Right I freaking uh, love. I love Don Pep. I I I. I yeah. I remember. I love Don Pepin. Like I love black. I love blue. Black's black's my favorite uh, out of the two. Even though blue got the higher rating, I don't know. But yeah, yeah, that, that Perdomo <laughs> is one of by far one of our best sellers for sure. Oh, the Perdomo Habano yep. Bourbon Aged Maduro. Yeah, it's yeah Perdomo song. does well in a lot of shops. Like they're, it's they, yeah, it's. I I think a lot of it has to do with price. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's it's price and it's a great cigar because what's funny, it's kind of weird in the Northeast because if you're south of the Mass Pike, it doesn't do well. It's not really popular, uh, Rhode Island, Connecticut, uh, uh, south of uh, ninety in uh, New York, but like New Hampshire, upstate New York, it is white, white hot. Mm. Uh, and uh, mm. and everything they do, not just like one particular shit, like all their lines, 20th anniversary champagne, bourbon barrel age line. Um, mm -hmm. And they're they're a great price and they're really good smokes. So it's, yeah. it's no surprise to see that they do well. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm old school with the Podomo. I'm, I'm a lot 23 guy. Am I correct? Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Lot yep. 23. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. So, mm. but uh, I don't know. I'm still an OG. I have not had yep. an acid 20 full disclosure. <laughs> Uh, people I, love it. I'm, 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 I'm sure they do. I, I just, I just never, I, yeah. I never got around to it yet this year. I'm, I will. There come Thanksgiving, Christmas, when I'm going out after work and catching up with friends and doing that, and I've had a couple of sticks. I'll, I'm sure I'll default yeah. to the acid twenty. Yeah, it's funny. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's a box press. Um, it's a little bit smaller than like maybe a Cuba. Mm -hmm. But uh, the feedback I heard from people at the show who tried it. Um, who aren't like acid fans are like, I don't really like, a you know, I'm not normally an acid smoker, sure. but this was really good. Yeah. So, and you know, people liked it at the shop. You know, what's crazy when I first heard of the acid 20 and obviously it's uh, for, for some of the newer story geeks listeners, it's a 20 year anniversary. I was like, Holy shit. Am I getting old? <laughs> Cause I remember when that first came out and we were rocking those. I, I know. I remember the the old school uh, meetings, me meetings, the old school cigar events when Drew Estate had a freaking 1964 something or other car, uh, and it would go to the events and whatnot, and over at the Humidor Smoke Shop and 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 checking out the car, and it was all tricked out with with the acid artistry and all that stuff. Uh, those were those were fun events. Those Drew events were 20, wild. Man. 
years ago, dude. Now you, you, you I, I, like I remember life be before Drew Estate. Yeah. <laughs> in the cigar industry, you know what I mean, and 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 be perfectly candid. Drew, Drew Estate did a phenomenal uh, recruitment job for their fans of the brand, for sure. Yep, and no one's ever been able to replicate it. No one's ever been able to replicate it. I don't know if anyone ever will. I I don't think so. I think you know a lot of it. Uh, you know, but what I like about it, and and this is gonna bring to the latter part of our interview. Uh, is, you know, it's like, what do you want to see? And I'm just asking you this now so you can start to think about it so I don't put you on the spot. But, like, what do you want to see, like, in the future of the industry? And you know what I liked about Drew Estate, staying on the th topic, is that, like, they did their best to incorporate, at the time, the artistry and culture of what is in Nicaragua and I believe it's Brooklyn, it's in New York, right? And they yep. and they and, and they fused infused the culture, right? No pun intended with with with, with the cigar infusion, right? <laughs> they 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 infused the culture mm -hmm. and then they just created such awareness and artistry in a pre internet time, like a pre social media time and all this stuff yeah. where it was like 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 it is today. And it just left you wanting to inquire more about the brand. Yeah, they're and, they're yeah. A very they're a very inclusive brand. Just naturally yeah. by the products they make yep. and the the broad spectrum of people who smoke Drew Estate cigars. Yep. Um, and yeah, and they they're masters at marketing. Yeah. They've done a great job of separating yep. themselves from other manufacturers. And they were in they were ahead of the curve in terms of what was going to be popular. And they you know. They got involved with the hip hop stuff before people, you know. It's, yeah, it, yeah, and it's yeah. it's it's a sex, section of the the business that a lot of guys are into. Yeah, yeah, and 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 what I like about it is is with the culture, is they've really um, stayed. It stayed the same. Like what I'm saying is that like the the Drew Estate acid fan didn't change you know what i'm trying to say no. like it, it just it's Not been it's been the same so now these 20 year olds who were exposed to drew estate like myself and, and 40 year olds now right because 20 years have passed and we, we there's a four in front of my number unfortunately right and and and, and you're like wow <laughs> like they've stayed the same you know what i mean and yep. even what i call new recruits because it really is like it's little underground little you know um militia if you will they have like a militia of fans right uh yeah. even them even the new recruits are still going back and, and going into that history which is going to yeah, tailor sure. which is going to tailor towards the end of my my question for you as far as what i miss greatly from the industry but anyway moving right along with this list uh drew you have anything to add yeah. on the nicaraguan <laughs> sky of the year try not to hog all the time I do oh that. i would oh no no we are i'm smoking the uh, oliva series v uh, Milan, Milanio. Yeah, and I'll tell you, this is like this is one of my go-to cigars, uh, at least twice a week. Yeah, uh, I've been hooked on these since since they they've, they've entered the market, and and I, I was going to see them on the list um, for sure. Uh, and uh, yeah, so just wanted to share that with everybody. That's what I'm representing right now. <laughs> well, I'm representing, I'm representing the uh, 25th anniversary edition. Christoph cigar mm. for Queensbury Tobacco oh, yeah. and Pipe that I got at their event. Uh, Dan, I love this cigar. You got to take some time. Don't let me say goodbye to you until we talk about that blend. All right. Yeah, try, definitely. Trying to stay focused. I'm all right. I'm smoking one myself. So. Yeah, they're super good. Like they're they're super good. That and that and and that new JT series have got yep. Christoph in my rotation for sure. Uh, Honduran city, a uh, city, jeepers crow. Honduran cigar <laughs> of the year. <laughs> Honduran Cigar of the Year, Alec Bradley Magic Toast, uh, CLE, um, Aroa, the first 20 years, Camacho, uh, mm -hmm. Nic uh, Camacho Nicarara Nicaragua Barrel Aged Toro, uh, General Cigar Company, the Macadudo Inspirado Orange, uh, JRE, uh, Aladino, Corojo Reserva, and the Rocky Patel um, Edge. Now, Rocky Patel Edge has been a, uh, around for a while. Uh, Alan Dino, I'm saying maybe two years off the top of my head, um, coming through uh, with JRE. Uh, the Macaduno in Spirito Orange. Have you had one of those, Dan? 
Yeah, yeah, we uh, we carry the Inspirato line at the store. Okay, uh, it's, it's really good. Yeah, um, definitely a different flavor profile than like your classic Macanudo like cafe series. Mm-hmm. Um, a little bit more body to it. They have a three or four different ones now, um, but they have like a red, black, white. You know, um, but they're pretty good and they're a great price point. They're under ten dollars. Yep. In New York, so that tells you they're. <laughs> that tells you that they're <laughs> probably eight fifty somewhere, somewhere else, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think they're actually eight fifty in New York, so they're uh, probably like sixty somewhere else. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, in Texas, for sure. Oh really? Oh, so yeah. you've had one, Drew? I've had one. Yeah, they're um, about seven bucks here. Yeah. So yeah, but, not too bad. Oh, it's a very, yeah. very good value. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go and find one for sure because I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to rag on any local shops. They don't have it over here. You know. All right, but anyway, <laughs> I, I I was an OG, Dan. When I went to your shop, I grabbed my uh the the Monte Cristo Platinum first shot. I was like, man, I love these things. You know, uh, there too. Anyway, Camacho Nicaragua Nicaragua Barrel Age Toro. Uh, I can see that maybe playing. What's funny about I can, you know, I can see funny that. About, what? It's <laughs> funny about that cigar. Um, that cigar is is rolled at the Dominican factory. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> just uh, just yeah, say it. Know, just, uh, I, okay, you know, unless I don't know. I just thought that was funny. I, it's a great cigar, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you, I love the barrel age line, the American barrel age, and the, well, you know what? I might be wrong. The American. They weren't making the Nicaraguan barrel age when I was at the factory, and uh, they were making the American there. So maybe they are making the Nicaraguan. I don't know. Nah, that's all good. Yeah, I like <laughs> it. Uh, <laughs> um, CLE, uh, Aurora, first 20 years. I, 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 I've had it. I like it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, yep. It's it's Solid smoke. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Alec Bradley, Magic Toast. I talked about this a couple weeks ago. I'm a fan of the Project 40 stuff. I'm not really swaying towards the Magic Toast, but I've heard it's doing very well. So. Yeah, who am I, right? Uh, Boutique Scar of the Year. Here we go. Dunburton Tobacco and Trust. Uh, the Sobre Mesa, Brulee. Mm-hmm. Totally, absolutely. Uh, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Foundation Tabernacle. Absolutely, that's uh, two great smokes right there. Um, I have not had a Just Some Crawl, if I'm even pronouncing it right. Uh, J S K Nugs. I I'm like, what the heck? So, have you even heard of that, Dan? Uh, uh, you probably know the answer to that. It's no. <laughs> yeah, no. I, you know, I like uh, I, I, up upstate New York is not a hotbed for boutique products. Yep. Now, Barton and Foundation, we both carry and we do really well with. But sure. some of the stuff flies over my radar, unfortunately. Sure. In uh, essence, of saving time on your interview, Drew, Drew and I will go through the boutique stuff. Uh, the the uh, Oscar uh, uh, Superfly, that's uh, that mm. is a banging smoke. Like I, you know, out of the gate, I was like, "Yep." And the uh, uh, Doomsayer by Room One Hundred One. So the, those are the the boutique cigars of, of of the year for their nominees. Uh, a couple more categories to review: mass market products. Uh, actually, we're, we're not gonna go. We're, we're, I'm just gonna burn through this, uh, just for the story yeah. geeks listener. The uh, Davidoff Mini Cigarellos Gold, the J.C. Newman Factory Throwouts. Uh, then you have Black and Milds, that, like their old school. Yeah. Black, yeah anyway, um, you got mm. some some Swisher Sweets <laughs> in there and some Villager export, Exports. Uh, again, this. You know, again, the, the the tobacco business caters to other than just premium cigars. So there you go. Uh, accessory manufacturer of the of the year. I could tell you who shouldn't win, uh, but anyway, your candidates are uh, St. Dupont, Zyka, uh Kentucky Double, Calibri, and Bovita, and Les Fins Lums. Uh, Fine Lames. Oh, Lafine. Who? What the hell is that? They make really That's high-end French. fancy accessories, but I have the Kentucky Double right here. I showed it to you earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my buddy Matt was hanging out for the show. He yeah. actually got this for me for uh, my birthday this year. This is a really cool like accessory if you want some cool ashtray for the the bar, by the way. Just to figure I'd throw that out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Zyka makes super cool product uh, for sure. Bovita, I don't know. I th- I think maybe they might they might run away with that, but. 
Anyway, um, I'm, what, I, I don't know. Dupont, baby. You know, you I think so? That, gotta have that ping, man. Not, you know, you gotta gotta have the ping. <laughs> that's T. Dupont. It's a little. That's a little fancy for me. Is that soft flame, right? Yeah, this is a soft flame. This is uh, my my buddy uh, Matt was kind enough to let me borrow this for the show. This is uh, the new Crazy Diamonds. Really cool piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yes. you know, there you go. Um, then tobacconist of the year, which we started the interview with, obviously Queensbury, uh, cigar and pipe being part of that, uh, twin smoke shop, uh, sure thing cigars, uh, Lord Puffer cigars, boss cigars and, uh, Anastead's tobacco, uh, company. Um, and then tobacco chain franchise, you got CI cigars, international Corona cigar company, old Virginia tobacco company, smoke in, uh, smoker friendly and tinder box. Um, I, I can probably predict that winner. Moving on, uh, entrepreneur of the yep. year. We'll we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll spend a little bit more times on the last three. Entrepreneur of the year, woman of the year, and the legacy award. Um, the entrepreneur mm. of the year, you will have uh, Alan Rubin from uh, Alec Bradley Cigars, Dave Garofalo from Two Guys Smoke Shop, um, Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars, Matt Booth from Room One Hundred and One, Pete Johnson from Tatuaje Cigars. And Robert Caldwell from Caldwell Cigar Company. A lot of good choices here. This, I think, is going to be a dog fight. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, however yeah. they, however that, that, and, you know, um, solid, solid choices right there. Not, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, really, yeah. really super cool. You know, Alec Bradley's starting to make a comeback. Dave Garofalo uh, is no stranger to the industry. Uh, Glenn Case from Kristoff, Matt Booth. Pete Johnson and Robert Caldwell. Interesting how the how that one's gonna pan out. Um, yeah. <clears throat> off air, both you and um, Drew text me your predictions on that one. We're not gonna. Well, I'm not going on record for that. You know what I mean? I can tell you who I voted for <laughs> because you know I, I'll look at him in the face and tell who I voted for, and I can tell you 15 reasons why who I wouldn't vote for. But uh, you know, anyway, moving on. Uh, any comments on that, gentlemen? <laughs> Are we good for sure? Yeah, no, I, I think it's I, I think it's really cool. It's a cool category. I think last year uh, Michael Herklotz won that from Nat Sherman. Mm. He's a great guy. Um, mm. But this is a cool list, and it was cool to see Dave on there. You know, it was a retail on the retail side to be in in uh, with a lot of manufacturers. Pretty cool. Yeah, to be the only retail. I mean, Dave's Dave's awesome. I mean, mm-hmm. he's brilliant on the retail stuff. And you know, I've, I'm biased because I you know I worked for Glenn. Uh, and he's great. He's a great uh, person to work for. Yeah. Uh, and he's a great guy. And I know him and Dave probably the best out of everyone on that list. And I hope one of those two takes it home just selfishly because they're good guys and they do a lot for the industry. Yeah. 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 It, it, like I said, when 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 I when I that was the only one that like when I was voting, I was like, whoa, like that's a solid. Like I like okay, you read it, you're like okay, I like this, you yeah. know, okay, yeah, yeah, and 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 that that one stuck out. I was like, wow, that's a solid list and that's probably don't be surprised if we were screenshotting it and fast forwarding a year or recapping this episode don't be surprised if some of those candidates are on next next year's ballot as well you know yeah, what i mean everyone everyone on that list could be on there every year yeah yeah definitely yeah. uh woman of the year um you have uh indiana ortez um you have uh I hope I don't uh hi Janie Janine 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 Perdomo yeah. thank you gentlemen uh Karen uh Berger um Lana Fraser Maya Salva and Nurka Reyes so interesting um going back you have uh so, uh, Nuka Reyes is Los De Reyes Cigars. Maya Salva is from Maya Salva Cigars. Lena Frey is from Davidoff. Uh, Karen is from uh, Don Kiki. Uh, Janine, did I pronounce it right? Podomo? Yeah? Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Uh, from Podomo Cigars. And Indiana Ortez from, uh, I know I'm going to smash this word. Drew, you got it? Can you pronounce it? Uh, Argo Industrial. Oh, Industrial. Okay. There you go. Industri- Agro Industrial. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And there you go. 
Uh, Nicaragua did tobacco, tobacco, South America. Yeah. Nicaragua. Really? Nicaragua. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I see the, I see the accent oh. marks above the. Yeah, like, there you go. Have you had? Yeah, like, have you even? Ha- have you even been exposed? No, you haven't been exposed to those, Dan. Have you? No. 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 There you go. Um, yeah. So interesting. I've I've been exposed to a, to a few of those. Uh, it, uh, I'm excited to see that. And again, don't be surprised if some of those candidates are going to be on next year's ballot as well. And then you have the Legacy Award, and this again is stacked for sure. Mm. You have uh, Carlos Calido Fluente Jr. from Arturo Fluente, Don Pepin Garcia from My Father's Cigars, Rocky Patel from Rocky Patel Premium Cigars, Nick Podomo from, I'm sorry, Nick Podomo Jr. from Podomo Cigars, Mm. Manuel Quesada from Quesada Cigars, and Henrik Villiger from Villiger Cigars. So, um, I, I that is a great list. I mean, if if we, I mean, if we were going old school, Don Pepin, Carlos Calido, or Manuel Quesada, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but then again, you could make an yeah. argument for what Rocky's done for the industry and what uh, uh, Henrich is 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 doing. Not really so much here in the states, but on the other side of the pond, sure. as they say, uh, v- Villiger mm-hmm. is 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 a player for sure. You Monster. Know? Yeah. Yeah, you know, if you if you if you're rocking out in Switzerland and Italy, you are no they are the, you know, they are the Drew estate maybe <laughs> of, yeah. of 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 over there. <laughs> with, the, with, with with without any of the art, but you know what I'm saying? They have a I lot of loyal followers. Still, I believe they're still the largest buyer of Cuban tobacco in the world. Mm. They're they're a big deal. But um I think I misheard you earlier when you were talking about women of the year, but uh yeah, I, I know Janine Perdomo. She's great. Uh, the both Nick and Janine, uh, husband and wife, mm-hmm. uh, they do a lot for the industry. They're great people. Um, can't, like I said, I can't say enough about them. They're very hospitable. Hospitable. Their, their factory tour is great. But um, uh, I hope they win. Uh, they're great. They do a lot for us. Uh, and they they, you know, if you walk in their booth as retail, they pretty much know everyone by name. Like, and that's pretty impressive for to be. Uh, you know, the owner of the company and know all your retailers all across the country yep. and be in tune with about what's going on. They're very involved in their business and they do a great job. Um, but oh, that, yeah. that legacy award in general, that's a, that's a, any one of those guys uh, could win that award easily. Awesome. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm be sure fun. if you tune in, uh, we will announce the winners here on story geeks. I'm sure, but you'll probably find out, on Facebook from the awards quicker because there'll be a couple day lag and social media tends to take that away, but we will certainly follow up on that for sure. Uh, two more topics I want to talk to so you. So the voting for the voting. What? Oh, God, no, I was going to say, so the voting, I was going to say, so the voting's open until the end of the So those of you guys who are out there on Facebook and you see that you definitely got some time to get your votes in. Your yeah. For sure. Yep. Yep. And, and let us know and let us know. Sure with us yeah let drew know drew at storygeeks.com everybody have you been getting emails drew everybody's everybody's talking to you i I can tell you've been getting a couple because like mine have cut down in half so that's awesome (laughs) if you have any complaints about the show you email drew at storygeeks.com if if you if you have anything positive to say you email drew at (laughs) storygeeks.com awesome dan i want to talk about two more things take us through this process of your anniversary party, which just happened on the 8th of uh, October. And, uh, Christoph, uh, you had made a stick, which I'm enjoying now, uh, called the QPC-25. QCP-25, yeah, uh, yeah. There you go, yeah. So, um, yeah, like you said before, I, I used to work for Christoph Cigars for a brief time. I uh, had a great relationship with, uh, with Glenn and Jared and pretty much, you know, the whole company. Um, they're great. Great people and make great products, but I uh, I ran into Glenn uh, around a year ago at an event um, outside of the shop, and we were just talking. He's like, "Hey, man, like I'd love to do some sort of project with you guys." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm 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 always down to do anything as long as it makes sense, and and our guys are going to be supportive of it." So um, we started uh, getting the wheels in motion. I was said, "Hey, next year is uh, Kathleen's 25th anniversary for of Queensberry Cigar and Pipe being open." Why don't we do a 25th anniversary stick? I think that'd be a perfect uh, time to launch one. We, we've never uh, done anything like that with a manufacturer. 
branded cigar. So it was, it was just great timing. Um, and the most important part of it for me was to get our customers involved in the blend because realistically without our customers, we can't operate our business. And, um, as much fun as it is to buy lots of cigars, I didn't buy, you know, thousands of cigars for myself or our staff to smoke. It's for our customers. So we wanted to make something that everyone who's a customer, whether a full body guy, mild guy, medium body guy could enjoy. And we wanted to get, make sure that their input was crucial in the uh, blending of the stick. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And, and, and how long did that take? Like roughly like, you know, so uh, we started talking early December and we got the product in store at the middle of August. Mm -hmm. Be so, I mean, basically we went from, okay, this is what we want to do in terms of uh, size, uh, shape. Uh, we talked about how I didn't want to do the traditional pigtail and uh, shaggy foot that Christoph does. I mm -hmm. wanted to a traditional smoke. Um, I wanted it to come in a small format box like the pissed off. Just use the same box as the pissed off. It's convenient for all of us. So we don't have to make a new box. Don't have to do anything fancy. Yep. Uh, and it takes up a small footprint. Um, and then uh, start working on kind of the blend stuff that I had uh, seen on the market that I think that would be a good starting point to go, this is kind of what I want to make it taste like. Um, and then uh, we did three or four blending sessions between um, myself, Jared, and John Fozzie, who's the uh, sales rep for Christoph. Mm -hmm. And then I did two or three sessions with our, uh, our VIP members, um, getting their input. Guys who smoke a lot of different cigars have, have good palates and um, can give me their honest feedback without just telling me it's good to make me, uh, you know, yeah, whatever. Take us, go away. take us through that <laughs> process because honestly, when, 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 when you had told me about that, I, I – I found it fascinating that you've, as 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 a business, I mean, smart move, but you've you've seek the input of some of your VIP members. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and and, and most people don't want to do that, right? They they want to produce something, yeah. like you said, either they smoke or whatever. But but take us through that and how that worked out for you. Yeah, I mean, to me, that's the most important part of the whole process because ultimately, we're not the ones buying the product at the retail level it's the consumer and if they don't like it it doesn't matter if it could be the best cigar that anyone's ever produced if it's not for them it's going to sit on my shelf and it's a waste of money it's a waste of time and it's a waste of effort and a lot of marketing and stuff so uh, we started with i think three blends uh we changed one uh portion of the blend on three different things so we used one i believe we started with an ecuadorian connecticut uh, and then we did two Ecuadorian Habanos and we changed one was with a Nicaraguan binder and one was with a Connecticut binder. Okay. And, um, we got all three, um, we gave it to them blind without telling them what the binder filler, any of the stuff is just, I want, I want your honest feedback. Tell me what you think of the cigar. Yep. And you know, they would tell me, okay, this one's too mild. This one's too strong. It's too bitter. It's what it's not for them. And we picked out, I think it was the second blend. And um, then we smoked that again, went through what we liked about it, what we didn't. And then we decided to up the priming uh, to give it a little bit more kick and um, not really change the blend, just change a little bit of the type of tobacco. We were like just up the priming really. And uh, and then we got that and that was it. We hit it exactly where we wanted it to be. Everyone, like, everyone agreed who was a part of the process that that was what it should have been. And then we moved forward with production with, uh, doing the box labels, doing the bands, all right. the other final stage stuff. So the, so the VIP members obviously had a chance to smoke the blend before the, the party that we were exposed to. When yeah. They, yeah I mean, that's they, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. They, they got it at the ground level, you know, because like I said, uh, it's twofold because one, they're a part of the process to make sure that it's the right blend for them. But two, when the product comes out, they're invested, um, in that process so they probably are going to want to pick some up for themselves and it's a cool thing to be able to say you were a part of making a cigar because it's it's not something that everyone gets to do unless you go on like maybe a factory tour right or right. on the manufacturing side yeah yeah that's super cool uh, that that'd be super cool if something like that happened locally i mean i know you are three hours away from us but like locally yeah. to, to 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 be part of a panel i've done some blind stuff yeah. um 
there's a uh, the Regency has been doing like a stick of the week, and then having them battle it out like over the month. You know what I mean? A brand and whatnot. I think it's on yeah. Thursdays off the top of my head. Uh, yeah. I, I, that's super cool because then you know you get the stick and they pair it. And I mean, all he's doing is is getting his customers feedback on that if it's gonna come in. You yeah. know what I mean? You know? Yeah. I, <laughs> you know. That's exactly what I do with uh, a lot of the same guys. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Coming up, I'll do a blind taste test with a few people to determine the top 10 cigars of the year at the store. Same thing, we'll do a blind taste test. And actually, uh, I'm working on a project right now. First off, uh, that potentially we might continue to do this series, and but include a lot more people in the blending process. And I think it would be pretty cool to every year be able to, the cigar will change based on who's in that room that day. And uh, mm. just see what comes out every year, just through that creativity and just the input of who's in that room smoking the cigar. Oh, so you'd be doing like a QCP twenty six or yeah, yeah, all right, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. Okay, so yeah. so they are going to be limited production. The the QCP two five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the QCP gotcha. twenty five is uh, yep. it, it, it's it's it's. Uh, yeah, it's limited production. If we might still keep it, I, who knows? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's, yeah. It's done really well, so it, I might not uh, stop production on it. If, you know, and that's up to Kristoff too, really, because they're the ones rolling it. Yeah, but you, uh, you're gonna be a VIP to 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 get in on on QPC two six. Uh, no, I, I, I like like I said, it's in the <laughs> early stages of planning right now. <laughs> right, right. And you should come up, man. I think we're gonna do like a whole big event with it, and. Uh, uh, possibly yeah make this an annual thing and then like yeah. i said who's in that room is going to determine who's in making what's going to make it to the final product yeah you're going to invite me to that event i'll slow down on my way to your place i promise yeah 77 <laughs> and under when you hit the New York line buddy i learned the hard way you know i got my results <laughs> yeah. from from court yeah yeah i'm johnny law has, has applied me guilty as charged yep you know <laughs> so i will be making my donation to the wonderful state of new york Pretty soon. <laughs> it's due. Anyway, um, awesome, awesome. What has been hot kind of going since post IPCPR? What, what has been like So what, what some of your clients been coming in? Um, we're we're going to probably ask this of all of our retail guests from now and, and until the next show. You know, ju just what's been, what's been kind of uh, uh, either a talked about stick that you don't have and you transfer them to another stick because it's not on your shelf or what 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 has been really going uh since the uh trade show well since the trade show um some stuff has just been hot and continued to get hotter uh and some we brought in some new stuff this year uh at the show that's done really well so like uh give me the Perdomo, hot and the perdomo is white hot yeah um yep. the more i add mm. the more it goes uh it's <sighs> kind of we normally when you add more facings some of the other cigars slow down uh in a line and i, I it's crazy it's just it, they're really popular um in our shop so perdomo is very hot um in terms of newer stuff um we we did bring in uh the sober mesa brulee that's done really well we had an event last night with uh, dunbar and oh yeah and yep. uh, the guys really enjoyed that the tricky traco which was the firecracker blend has done well um uh, late hour, it, it, since it's come out, it's still hot. Uh, yep. That's still a really yeah. popular smoke. Um, Christoph Vengeance, again, same thing. Um, How's the, what really is it? Uh, not Timeless, not Sherman, the Prestige? Is that a Prestige series? The pre yeah, the, the Supreme and the Prestige. They yep. basically just renamed the Dominican and the, right. the Nicaraguan. But, yeah, those do really well. Yep. Um, the Host is still the, the, the cream of the crop in terms of uh, selling, you know, the you know, the Baccarat style, the original Baccarat, basically. Yep. Um, that sweet tip mm -hmm. uh, flavored smoke. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, the stuff that has been hot has stayed hot. You know, Davidoff, Late Hour, Perdomo, Kristoff, um, Vengeance, and uh, we brought in uh, Tabernacle. Actually, you know what? Out of the foundation stuff, Charter Oak is has been killing it because yeah. it's a great price point and it's a great cigar for – under seven dollars yeah that's so. a phenomenal oh, price yeah. point that charter yeah. oak is at and yeah. i think it's a great introduction uh to uh from a business move to get um some consumers into the foundation brand yeah for sure you know um yeah it's it's you know it's 
this year has kind of been what the last couple of years has been this, um, more of the consistent brands have been doing consistently better. Yeah. Um, as long as it's on the shelf, it, it'll keep cranking. Mm -hmm. Final question for you, Dan. What do you want to see in 2020, 2021 from the industry itself? I've asked, I've been asking this as the final question for our story geeks interviewees to kind of, to kind of get a synopsis as to like what, what not like a prediction as far as like where the industry is going or whatnot, but like, like what, what, what do you want to see more of or less of, uh, you know, uh, out of the, out of the industry? So I would say a couple things, uh, a couple things I'd want to see. Definitely. Uh, I'd like to see a Queensberry cigar and pipe win tobacconist of the year in the tobacco business awards in 2020. So there you go. appreciate your, appreciate your vote. If, uh, <laughs> you haven't voted yet, sure, so that'd sure. be one thing. But, um, I'd really love to see more retailers get together and work together in their state, uh, groups. If they have a state cigar, so tobacco association work together to fight off a lot of legislations that's coming through. I mean, every day you read more about, flavor bans, uh, smoking bans, um, tobacco selling bans. Um, it's important now more than ever to get together with your state organization. If you don't have a state organization in your uh, state, create one. Um, retailers got to work together to protect each other because if one, of, one retailer goes out of business, it's not like the other one's going to get all their customers. They might move on or they might stop smoking. Um, uh, myself and, and Kathleen are on the New York Tobacco Association board, so we work really hard to try and prevent a lot of uh, laws going into effect in New York, uh, and, and then also proactively do stuff to uh, help retailers besides just fight off stuff. But work together, if you're on the retail side, to uh, protect all of your own businesses. Um, it's, it's important because of the landscape we're in. Uh, and in terms of uh, on the retail consumer side, I, I'd just like to see more... Um, more great cigars coming out, you know, mm. hopefully the FDA stuff, you know, it's, it's a great question mark, but to be able to see the, the consistency and the quality of cigars that be coming out right now is probably better now more than ever. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to see more of that and, uh, yeah, you know, just, uh, you know, support your brick and mortar stores. Yeah. That's I think, I think you, you, you bring up a, a bunch of valid points where the retailers definitely need to work together. I often sit in, one retail shop and have them talk about another retail shop and vice versa and it just it just doesn't do good for the consumer yeah. it doesn't make them look good uh, well you're, ne you you're never gonna get a, you're never gonna get away from the gossip girl aspect of the industry but when you're in that when you can be competitors and be comp competition is great and be competitors when you're in your own business but when you're in a room together trying to work on state stuff you got to work together and yeah. you got to put your differences aside and realize the dire straits some states are in to prevent your business from being successful. And you need each other to get yeah. that stuff. So just be, you know, it's there's nothing wrong with being competitive and knowing what's going on with your competition. But, you know, yeah, it's not the best thing to do in front of your customers, but uh, it happens. But... Most of them do. <laughs> yeah. Most oh, of yeah. them do. Yeah. Yeah. Work together, yeah. you know, support each other. Yeah, Please. actually, that's interesting because I remember when we went down to the State House in Rhode Island when some of our legislation was there. One of yep. my takeaways was that the arguments weren't in unison. You know, one shop owner said this, one shop owner said yeah. this, and the one, and, and and it was like they were all great points, but. Sure. If I were a C student politician listening to a panel, I would at least know, since I was a C student, that it should be all, like, you have to make an impact on the floor to get them to consider whatever their vote is. Oh, most of them know the vote, and they're going through the motions. Either way, right? Not, right. not but, but I would want a, a more organized, you know, the forum was like, Joe Zeppa hosting the story geeks. Hey, yo, hey, you know, and, and all of that. And it wasn't yeah. like like one, two, three. These are our points. You know what I mean? And yeah. and if as opposed to if there were really pending legislation in New York and or or, or or any of the state, and if they were a bit more organized, 
and on the same page it would be you know we had some what we had legislation wise was they wanted to raise the cap tax 50 cent cap tax right. from 50 to 80 some was saying yep. we'll get rid of the 50 cent cap tax altogether so i can do this some yep. was saying keep it at 50 cents cap tax and someone's saying oh well well maybe you should uh go back and just settle for the difference and make it 65 and i'm just like yeah. i'm sitting there and i'm like if i was them i'd be like i've already had a notion of whether i like or unlike tobacco that's up for the voter uh or for the right. politician and and you did not help or hurt your situation you just didn't help your situation if that makes sense you just sense. spoke yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you just said your piece of mind as opposed to yeah, you know what you're saying. Yeah, and then it's, we were and we were combined. Yeah, and then we were combined with because they had some vape legislation in there, and they had some cigarettes yeah. of legislation in That's there. That's the problem. And they broke their arguments out. It's like you know you had the vape guy or gal, shop owner crying poverty, yet they never even had a tobacco tax ever in Rhode Island. So it's only been yeah. sales tax. So it's like you've right. had this ride for freaking four years. You know what I mean? Yeah. These guys the haven't had the ride. Cigarettes are taking a bombardment, but the cigarette yep. the cigarette industry was the most organized. They had the um, the uh, um, not retail association. What are they called? Uh, uh, gas the stations. Store. The, the the gas station. The store. Yeah. C store. Yeah, yeah, they had their legislation there. Oh, yeah. And they just simply said, like, they, dude, they were like, boom, mic drop. They rolled up in the thing and yep. said, listen, like, if you raise a cigarette tax in Rhode Island, 60% of all gas purchases come from the purchase of, of, of cigarettes. Yep. And bang. Yep. And you know what they did? They let it slide for another year. They just let it slide. They were going to raise it from yep. 425 a pack to 450 You know what they did? They okay, came back. And they looked somewhere else. Now, they didn't yep. do anything to cigars yet. Mm -hmm. They didn't do anything to, to the vape yet because of all the vape that's been going on that's above that level. But right. it's like they were the most organized. And I was like, dude. Oh, like they're always they're always <laughs> going to the job because big tobacco, I mean, it's big tobacco, man. And C stores are what moves the, the needle in any any state, really. Yeah. And, um, you know, like like we were just saying, we could we could talk all day about all this different stuff. But like in New York, for example, they this they just banned uh, vape recently uh like a flavored vape across the state mm -hmm. so and it's it's i don't want to ever see anything banned as as got you know it's you know like to whatever yeah. but um it was the first time the state had separated vapor from tobacco products mm -hmm. because they they don't understand what it is or it, how it works and what happens is they end up rolling in a lot of other tobacco stuff like flavored tobacco right um just because they let's see what we can get through but they don't understand how the industry works in that if you tax super high you're just going to lose all that money to pennsylvania which is tax free or new hampshire or online and it's it's a it's a really crazy landscape and like i say you got to work together because there's some stuff you're not going to be able to like tobacco 21 that's going to happen federally within the next couple of years like that's going to be interesting is, because of 21's the, gone I, I know but because of the whole military yeah you, you know what i mean like that's Alcohol, like that too you like, know it's right like yeah. that that's going to be very uh, that's gonna be very interesting uh, uh as, yes. as, as as to how that goes down as well but, but you know so like uh, the new york tobacco we we knew like there were that wasn't our hill to die on because yep. there was nothing that we were going to do to stop that but right. Uh, right now, they're introducing potentially a flavor ban in New York State on tobacco products. That's pipe tobacco, flavored, uh, you know, flavored cigars, acid, you name it. Yeah, black and brown, all mm -hmm. of it. That's stuff that we. That's why being organized before this stuff hits can help you get a head start on getting with your politicians, working together with the PCA, which is a great group to support retailers and yeah. protect your businesses. And right. that's why I say you got to together proactively and not reactively yeah absolutely absolutely well dan thank you for joining us here on stogie geeks appreciate it having... appreciate yep. it hope you enjoy, hope uh, you enjoy the qc25 and uh see you guys soon nice yeah to meet you, good, Drew. good luck with the voting as well so yeah absolutely stogie geeks we're gonna take a quick break drew and i are gonna come back talk sticks of the week <laughs> 